the blue and the gray. Bruce Catton's novel of the Civil War brought to the screen by these guys. Here's the director, would you believe? Look at this fellow right here. His name happens to be Andrew McLaughlin and starring Stacy Keach. Now, these, oh, to get them both at once in all one fell swoop. <laughs> This guy's directed over 300 television episodes, many of which were Have Gun, Will Travel, and worked with the really big stars, uh, John Waynes and Jimmy Stewart and so on. Why did it take you so long to get to this guy, to get to Stacy Keach? Uh, well, well, well I tr we tried to get together before this, like 10 or 11 years ago, and we didn't quite make it then. It took, it, it took then 10 or 11 years before we did. On a Civil War project. On yeah. a Civil War yeah. project. It never, got, it never was... It was Andersonville. Never. We were going to do Andersonville in about 72. Uh. Ah. Yeah. It, it took you about 10 years to do Long Riders? About 10 years, nine years, yeah. It took the blue and the gray about six years. Six years? Six years from the time of inception, yeah. from the idea of a fellow named Lou Rita, and uh, who brought it to Larry White, who brought it to Columbia Pictures, who, who brought it to CBS. I mean, that's the, the way these it, things work. Brought Randy McGregor, who brought it to me. Right. <laughs> and you said, I'll do it. A boy in a second. That's yeah, but hey, Laurence Olivier said to you back, back a number of years ago, that to be the real special actor, you see, you want to play the support people, the character people. Then you can really get some meat and potatoes. You're playing it straight. Well, I know, but he's the, he's the older of the two straight players, so that right. makes him the character player, you see. Exactly. John, right. Hammond, John Hammond is the younger of the two. I he would see. be the young leading man. He is the older. The older leading man. Yes, yes. right. How does he take direction from you? Very well. You better. <laughs> you give him a look. <laughs> <laughs> you give him a look. No, what, what kind of an, I mean, does he, is he the kind of actor who gives you too much so that you have to tone him down or do no. you have to pull it out no. of him or what? Well, that's very hard to ask or to answer <laughs> because every actor has his own concept of the part, of the character. If he does whatever, then it's up to the director to suggest this or that. Trace, uh, Stacy, uh, he's pretty much on the ball, on the on the nose. He's studied this character. We've discussed it before the picture started. It gets to a point on, when you're working on a set too, of, of you get to know a director and what a director wants. It gets like almost to hand signals, where it's just a matter of a little bit more, a little bit less. It's like, I mean, that's really uh, because by the time you get on the set, it's not there's no, there are no earth-shattering revelations that have to be you know on on earth. I mean, it's. It, we, 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 we sort of, we see eye to eye beforehand. Well, with cast of thousands, though, I mean... Well... Oh, yeah. how did... We had a lot of speaking parts. But Stacy is in it uh, throughout the, mm -hmm. the piece. And so, you know, we work together every single day for four months almost. And John Hammond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you're kind of a Civil War buff, aren't you? I mean, you really got into this. Well, because of, because of early... Mm -hmm. you know, experiences, yeah, but not really. A, I wouldn't say a buff, but I have a passion for history. I, I really, I enjoy the period, and I, I'll say this: that since se, have, since having done it, I've gotten, I've really gotten to know the Civil War a lot. Mm -hmm. a lot. What was the well, budget for this? Movie? Well, you know, uh, uh, as a director, uh, as long as they give me everything I want in order <laughs> to do it, I don't have to go around asking what the budget is. But you mean you could uh, have anything you wanted, whatever you well, no, needed? Well, everything I needed, everything I needed to make this film, they gave me. I mean, as far as people and equipment and actors like Stacy and Gregory Peck and Sterling Hayden and John Hammond and the rest of the cast. So, what the budget is, I don't know. I think it was probably <laughs> around 15, 16 million. Oh, that wouldn't be bad. We could, we could do a couple of shows with 15 or 16 million. Well, where did you get things like those beautiful old trains? Well, we got those in, uh, in uh, Arkansas. Eureka Springs, which is about uh, an hour's drive from Fayetteville. Fayetteville is the home of the University of Arkansas. It's a beautiful, beautiful little town in northwest Arkansas. And it was ideal for our headquarters. Who decided Arkansas would be the location? Well, I helped along with that in the initial trip with uh, Larry White and Hugh Benson, Harry Thomason, and Seymour Friedman, the production manager at Columbia Pictures. And we went to uh, Kentucky, and then we went to Arkansas, and we stayed in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And Stacy, you spent how long on it? I was on it. The whole time. The better time. part of four yeah. months. The better part of four months. months. Yeah. Uh, some, of the, some of the scenes when you had to deal with those horses, mm -hmm. they must have been really tough. Well, yes, they were. How, what kind of a rider are you? That's good. Is he? Yeah. I, I was very lucky. My dad put me on a horse when I was four Major. years old, and I have horses of my own, so Where can I find General I, I, I'll walk him any excuse to get on a horse. Well, your mother and dad were both actors, weren't they? No, my dad was, was and is yeah, still is. A, an actor. Uh, but my mother was, I guess, 
when she was in college. She doesn't act anymore. Well, well, did they encourage you? Did they say, hey, we want our kid to be an actor when he grows up? No, not at all. They said, we don't want our kid to be exactly an actor when right. he grows yeah. up? Yeah. You Precisely. defied them? I did. Yeah, same happened to me. My father said, don't be in the motion picture business. <laughs> Anybody who's been in the business is... No. Has, too tough, too much competition, same, too yeah. much this and that. Be a lawyer or a doctor. Same exact. Stacy exact, got the same thing. Exact. Well, you know, you are the size that you are and the way in which you look. Why didn't you go into acting? Well, Twelve years old, I decided I might be a director. But you even have the voice. I mean, you've got the power, you've got the strength, you've got the looks. Well... Maybe that's good for a director, it too. Sure is. Is. <laughs> How does that help? It helps a great deal because it, 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 it's a, the voice of authority. I mean, it, it commands respect. And, and, uh, and uh, it, I think, you know, it, don't, don't encourage him to be an actor. We don't okay. have any good oh, actors. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> but do you think size is really a factor in the way, in, the kind of person you are because you're so big? There are an awful lot of good short directors. <laughs> it's true. No, but don't you have a certain attitude? I mean, you carry authority just by virtue of your height. I, maybe. I, I, hope to, I hope that's true. That's absolutely true. I don't, you know. But I don't think that's true with everybody. Uh, no. You don't think so? No. I think it's true of Andy. I think it's true of Andy. I don't know. You know, there's, one, there's only, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the biggest director in Hollywood. Six feet seven. <laughs> right no, there's one, there's one taller, Michael Crichton, yeah, six so nine. Oh, oh, six nine. Six right. nine, right. I was just going to say. Yeah. What's the nicest thing about the blue and the gray for you? What are you most proud of? Well, I'm just, I'm most proud of just being in it, first of all. But I, I think, uh, I, the quality of the pieces is, 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 it's so high. I mean, from everybody. I mean, the cast, the production crew, the, everybody was absolutely committed and devoted to creating something of superior quality, of excellence. And I think that due to his inspiration, I think we've managed to accomplish that. Well, everybody was very sad when our adventure ended. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That it wasn't just another piece of no, work. No, no, no. It was, no, really, it was really a special hated thing. We hated to go home. And it wasn't just for us, because we were really aware of the fact we had responsibility, because we were telling the story of a part of our history that we were going to share with everybody in America and in the world. It's not just going to be shown on television here, it's going to be shown in every country in the world. And it'll take eight hours. Wow, wow. Three hours, two hours, three hours. And you'll be able to see it here November the 14th, skip a night, then watch it the 16th and the 17th for three hours. So block out that time and don't, get in, don't let anything happen. Don't go bowling, don't go play racquetball because you want to watch the story of the Civil War. Andrew McLaughlin, nice meeting you. you. Nice to you. Stacy, it's always a pleasure. Nice to meet always you. a pleasure. And 1011 Morning continues.